Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockroom Supply. Um, if you've been following my Instagram, you would know that this uh, record power Coronet Herald lathe is going to be available very soon in Canada, basically the beginning of November. So what I've done is I've invited two local turners. Uh, they're both very, very talented and they're both uh, their opinions I value. So I've invited them over today and I want them to test out the lathe. Now I'm a touch nervous because both of them, uh, one of them owns a really big one-way, uh, one owns a Powermatic, and I know that they both love their machines. Now, not that I think that their brand loyalty is going to cloud their judgment, but I, of course, and it'll be interesting to hear what they have to say about the record lathe. So, um, yeah, they should be here shortly, so I'm going to let them test out the lathe. I know Peter's bringing a piece of Osage Orange very, very hard, and I know Marv's bringing some wet wood, so we'll see what happens here. I want to give you guys the rundown on the lathe. So Coronet Herald lathe, it's a 14 inch swing by 20 inch length. Morse taper two on both sides. A one inch and a quarter, eight teeth per inch thread on it. I have the SC4 chuck on it. That's not included, but it does come with a face plate, a spur drive, and a live center. Um, now, some of the really cool, unique things about it, um, this headstock is a swivel headstock. Now, the one thing that people will often be concerned about with headstocks or swiveling and swivel head lathes, like this older design uh, record power here, um, when you go back to zero, when you're trying to line up your headstock with your tailstock, sometimes thing it's hard to get things back aligned. Now, what record has done is they have some positive stock bearings underneath there. So when we go back to zero and we lock that up, that's going to be right on every time. And but having a full headstock that allows you to do outboard turning up to 21 inches diameter. Now, if you're a left-handed lathe or a turner, you can flip the headstock all the way around, run it in reverse, and it becomes a left-handed lathe, which is kind of cool. Um, now the tailstock is nice. On the back of it, you have the locking handle, very easy to slide and lock. Um, now, unlike most tailstocks. Back here is hollow, so you got a hand grip here. So when you're sliding it, you don't have to use two hands. Uh, you can grip it right here and slide this back and forth just like that. Lock it up. Very nice movement on the threads here to lock it up. And the banjo. Uh, I find it works really well. Locks really nicely, nice and solid. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to lock it. Now, the legs, um, when I first saw a picture of this, of this lathe, when I didn't see it in person, I was a little bit leery of the legs, but after seeing them, I love the things. Um, so they're a tubular steel leg. They're a heavy gauge metal. Um, there's no impedance under here. So there's lots of places to stand. Um, you don't have to get things in the way. Now the other really cool thing on the top of the leg, you won't be able to see it with the camera, but there's a little cap. You can open up that cap and these legs are hollow and you can fill that full of sand or lead or whatever you want and really add a lot of weight to those legs, um, which is kind of cool. Um, there's also bench feet available for it, but you don't need the bench feet. You could attach the legs directly to the ways here um, and only have the bench feet if you want to put it on a bench. But if you're a really tall person, you may want the bench feet for the extra height. Um, everything else, um, the motor electronics, really interesting system where most ways, when I adjust the speed here, it'll tell you how fast it's going. You can actually pre-program the record lathe uh, before you even turn it on for the speed you want it to spin. Um, and of course you can adjust it midway through. Now when we turn it off here, if you open up the headstock, you got three pulleys right on the back side here. So that's your torque settings. And then you just tell the control panel here which setting you have it on. Now, if you want to reverse it, it's very easy. You just hold that button and it'll beep. It'll pop it in reverse there for sanding and things like that. Um, now, also you'll notice it's a slow start lathe. So when you're doing larger pieces, it's nice because um, just as a safety feature, um, things aren't going to be going full speed right away. So turn her off there. Uh, what else can I say about it? Oh. The, the spindle lock here is pretty interesting in its own right. If we look at it, on the, you probably can see right here in the back, there's 24 different spots to lock it. Now on the front, 
we have a little window. Um, so if you look at that window, you probably see a number eight down there. I don't know if the camera will allow you to see that. But if I lock this up, now, if you look at the way the design is, it's got a tapered designed lock. So there is nearly zero play on that spindle lock. If I unlock it, away it goes. Now what they've done, rather than using this as a spindle lock, you should just use this as an indexer. If you want to actually lock the spindle with the same bar that we use to swivel the head, on the back of the hand wheel, if you look back here, there's a hole that will run right through the hand wheel. If I slide this bar right through here, that will lock my headstock, um, just like that. Then we don't have to worry about damaging those perfectly accurate tapers and losing any of the accuracy in the indexing. Um, as far as that, it's a, yeah, a really well engineered, really well designed lathe. I'm excited for Marv and uh, Peter to get here and try it out. I like that. So what do you got spinning at now then? That's about 900, 920 something. Marv and Peter here. So Peter's already done a little bit of churning on this Osage orange chunk, um, but Marv has not. So Peter, you're not allowed to say anything, but Marv, before you use the lathe, first impressions. Well, I'd have to say the first impression is that the stand looks very solid. There is no impediment in your feet space. You, you can walk around the thing without feeling like it's awkward. The machine itself looks like it's built fairly well. There's a mass to it that looks respectable. When you have cast instead of uh, tin, it certainly looks like it's going to be strong. Um, without having tried the lathe, I can only say that it looks reasonable. And um, looks is always not what you want. You want results. So we'll have to say after we finish it whether we like the machine as well as we like the look of it. But the look of it is very good. And I think it's designed very well. The motor being off balancing the headstock gives it some logic. And because of the fact that we can slide the headstock, we yeah. have a lot more dexterity than if we have a fixed unit like one way. Sure. Yeah. Which is what you're used to. Which is what I'm used to. So it just comes down to, yes, first appearance, first appearances are respectable, I would say. Awesome. Well, let's let you try it then. Okay. A lot quieter, eh? Compared to that dry wood? Yeah. <laughs> Very quiet. That, os that dry Osage orange is very loud. And you said this is poplar, right? Or uh, tulip. tulip wood. Marv and Peter have had a chance to play with the lathe, so let's get their opinions here. So I'm closest here. How do you guys feel about the tailstock itself? I like the tailstock. It's a uh, very positive cam action. It doesn't take any effort to loosen or tighten it. It slides readily. It's got a reasonable grip on here so that one can remove it with one hand and set it down out of the way. Sure. 
Okay, so Peter, I'll ask you then, how do you feel about the banjo? Um, I, I think the banjo is about the best, to be honest, that I've ever used. Really? Seriously, yeah. I, I mean, look, I mean, literally, I can undo that with two fingers and it is lock solid. I can't move it. I've never had a banjo work like that ever. Um, I mean, even, okay, this looks a little bit puny, but it's not, I, I mean, it actually locks. And again, it's, everything is so solid, it locks totally in position. And I mean, everybody says, oh, you know, do not do this. Do not move the banjo with the piece running. But I mean, look, it, it's moving easy. It locks easy. I can, there's no effort there at all, you know. Right. I, I mean, I've got one-way banjos on my Powermatic because they're the best banjo on the market. This, I say, is better than the one-way banjo. Wow. Now, whether a bigger version would be better, I right. don't know. It well, might, they got the bigger machines coming you know, out. It so. might have, but yeah, very impressive, you know, very mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah, I like the banjo. Okay, so let's talk about the motor and the controls in general. Um, how you, like, as far as the speed changing beforehand, or if you like that, or you'd rather... Tell me about that. I guess, Marv, you can go here. I felt a look at speed on my lathe. I feel the lathe as to what I'm getting out of it, what it's telling me, and um, yet to know that you're not overspinning it before you start it is very valuable. I think that um, the obvious readout is a whole lot better than the one way. They've just got a, a gauge that you've got to scrutinize on the on the um, startup thing and. Um, no, it's a it's a reasonable setup. Did you guys feel like it had enough power, or <clears throat> I know you were able to slow it down a little bit? I think on the lower RPMs. Don't um, be afraid to say anything bad about it. I I, 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 I can't say anything bad about the motor. I think it's rated at one horse at the spindle, yep. whereas most of the other brands are rated at one horse at the actual motor. And I, and I think. You can feel that. A spindle is a true way of actually defining what the horsepower is. So I really can't. I mean, I, compared with the three quarter horse I've got on the, the, the Nova um, Comet, Comet um, it's definitely got more of them. Definitely. But yeah. again, I'm quite happy with the three quarter. I don't really have a big problem with it, you know. Uh, the, the one thing I do really like, I do like the readout. I've got readout on the Powermatic and I love it. And one of the things that I did when we first started up this afternoon, I put a big out of balanced lump of wood on there and I dialed the speed up and then hit the on switch and it was okay, the lathe wasn't moving. And then I slowly increased the speed and the lathe started walking across the floor, mm -hmm. but I already knew what speed I could take it back down to where it was safe. Right. So you've got a reference there that you can now say, okay, it was waltzing around at 900 RPM, at 600 it was safe. I can now go back to 600. And it's a reference, you know, right. and it's great. So um, but again, I'm the same as Marv. I judge the speed by the feel of the lathe and whatever the wood is I'm cutting. I don't go to that as a, a Bible thing that right. it has to be at that speed, you know. So, yeah. Okay. I do like the fact that you can dial in the different speeds and then just hit the on switch. Um, the one thing both Marv and I have commented on is it is slow to ramp up yep. and slow to slow down. Yep. There's, there's quite a time. But that could be a good safety thing. It's just that something that... I mean, Miles turning on a one way all the time, I'm turning on a Powermatic, you know, and we're not used to these long up and down speeds. Sure, but, yeah. Uh, for a lathe this side, I think it's a good feature, you know. I really like the layout. I've got to say, I like the whole layout, and the big bonus to me is it's a baby Powermatic in as much as I can slide the headstock down the end, sure. stand on the end, and turn a ball. Yep. And even lathe, even Mark turned around and said, he liked that. Yeah, you know, right. and I've never worked on that. He's never worked on he never had a sliding headstock no, lathe no. before. So that was a feature that I didn't mind at all. Yeah. Now we haven't tried turning the headstock, uh, but I, you know, I really don't see there's anything that can be negative about it. So I mean, 
the the only real downside of anything is the fact that this doesn't self eject. Yep. If the tailstock had a self ejection system on it, it would to me, yeah. You couldn't wish for a better life, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that um, you guys like. So, Marv, like in general opinion, you liked it generally. It sounds like, but the yeah, I think if I were looking for a lathe of this size, this would probably be one of the choices because it's very clean and it's easy to move maneuver around. I like the sliding headstock. I like the tilting aspect. So there's just a lot of features that make sense. Somebody thought this out pretty good. Yeah. Well, and the big bonus is if you're a left left handed turner, you can turn that sure, yeah, you can flip you, it around you and then go on the other side and, yeah. and run it in reverse and do left handed turning. You Absolutely. know, I mean yeah. Very so good. there's a lot going for it. The added extra that we did talk about, I don't know whether you took it on video, was when you've got that the headstock down the end here it would be nice to have a remote on off switch, a right. magnetic one that you can put handy instead of reaching across a spinning bit of wood to turn the thing sure. off. Yeah. So that would be a good safety, yeah. extra and safety. I, I believe that they have that as an option, but on the bigger ones they do come with the magnetic switch that can move right. wherever. Yeah. Um, so yeah. The remote switch is the remote. so easy. Yeah, they just flick it on and off while yeah. the bowl's here so you don't have to reach across it. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. So. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for turning um, and testing it out for me. Um, if anybody else has any questions on the lathe, feel free to email me at info at stockandsupply.com or comment on the video. And make sure you add me on Instagram. Thank you much.